just to give you a little background on this and why this is even happening, um, I had a, uh, a couple of uh, parents that I dealt with last year that had a lot of questions about they had some kids that were going into college, trying to make decisions on stuff, and so they wanted me, they started asking me questions, so I just started telling them all the stuff that I thought most people knew. Uh, and so I just started sharing that stuff with them, and they uh, said, no, we haven't done this yet, we haven't done that yet. So I'm like, well, this, I understand now that maybe the stuff that I was a part of for like 10 years, uh, where I was at a college that I just did on a normal daily basis, other people weren't doing those things, and so it was something that was just normal to me. Other people hadn't had those experiences. So uh, after I told those people that, and they were able to go on college visits and things like that, and they knew the questions to ask, uh, they came back and told me, other people need to know this. You need to share this with other people. And so I said, okay. Uh, and so at that point, I just started putting together some notes and some things you know, over, the, over the past year, just uh, some things that uh, I was able to experience. God blessed me with the, with the uh, opportunity to experience these things. And so I wanted to try to get those across to you guys and, let you, and share those with you so that uh, you could take those uh, with you. Because I know all of you, if you're here, you've got, you've got children who are interested in college athletics. And I'll just say this. Uh, what I'm getting ready to share with you isn't going to guarantee your son or daughter a college scholarship, okay? But there are some things you can do. <laughs> there are some things you can do to uh, get on their radar, okay? And uh, get your name in front of them. And uh, so, uh, just my experiences as a coach in college, it's things that got my attention. Uh, I'm going to be able to share those things with you tonight. So uh, before we get into some of the things that you need to do, I think there's a, there's a couple things that uh, you need to uh, figure out first with your, with your uh, student athlete that's in your house. Um, I would, I usually had, and you guys can say this is my number, I would have around 50 guys on my baseball team to start the year. We didn't finish with 50. Uh, because the year, as the year went on, they realized this is not just fun and games. This is, this, is a real, this is serious. This is a real deal. And it really is. It's like a job. So uh, call that is something that your, your student athlete really needs to ask some questions. Is this really what I want to do? Because it's, it's a job. Okay? It, it, it's, it's not three months and the season's over. But to, from the time you step on that campus to the end of the school year, that coach has got you. Okay? And they're going to keep holding you, and they're going to have, have you on a pretty rigorous, organized schedule. And uh, you're going to be accountable to, to that coach and to the other coaches on in the program. So uh, really sit down with, with your son or daughter and say, is, is this something you're really committed to? Because this is, this is going to be work, uh, and you've got to be committed to it. Okay. What is their plan for, for how many years they're wanting to play? Okay, I can't tell you how many kids would come to my office and it always started out the same way. Coach, I've been praying about this. I'm not going to say we're getting ready to quit, right? So, yeah. It's like, don't blame God. You know, don't bring God to this. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> laugh at it. You know, but, you know, yeah, yeah, I just, I wasn't really committed. I just kind of wanted to try it out. And it's like, okay, I'll give you scholarship money to come and just try it out. So, uh, that doesn't make a, a coach very happy. So you really got to test the waters here. What is their commitment level? Are they really want to do this? Are they really want to stick with this? Uh, so this stat or signings, you know, about three to five percent of high school athletes. That's the number that actually move on to get the opportunity to play at the next level. Three to five percent out of all the high school athletes in the nation. That's not very many. But less than 1% of all high school athletes play four years of the sport that they go into. Okay, so that's even a more elite level of a person that, that actually sticks with it for four years because there's plenty of opportunities to talk yourself out of staying for four years. Right? There are. 
So why these questions? Well, one thing I just said there, but, but another thing is you're representing our, our, our department. You're representing SCA uh, and all the future athletes. Uh, I've got, I had two different stories of, of two different schools who I had athletes that came to my, they were on my team. Uh, one of them got in trouble for some illegal substance that he had. And then the next year, a kid from that same high school that was in the program, same thing happened. Okay? Uh, stupid me for recruiting two of them. Okay? But that really made me question, do I really want another athlete from that program? Okay? I had two kids from the same program quit their freshman year just because they weren't really that committed. Okay? And so that really made me question, do I want to go back to that high school and get more athletes from that school uh, because that's seems like a trend to me. Okay, so so remember that. Go don't go in with the plan that uh, you're just going to try it out. I'm going with the plan that I'm going to I'm going to play for four years. Okay, so that's the first consideration you need to have. Okay, so you talk to your college athlete, your your your, your student athlete. They're committed. They're going to hold that. They want to do it. Okay, you got it. So what are the first steps I need to start doing? Some of you guys may have already done this. But the first thing you need to do is you need to get registered with the eligibility centers. Okay, there's a couple different ones. Okay, NEI, I can you can see there, there's the website, uh, playnei.org, you go to the eligibility center, you fill that out, yes, there's a fee. Okay, if you want to play college sports, they're going to charge you a fee just to be eligible. All right. And then NCAA, this is Division Three, Division Two, II, Division One. You all go to the same place, NCAA.org. Click on Eligibility Center and you fill out the eligibility stuff on that. Okay, that's the first thing you have to do. If you don't do that, you can't go any further. All right, that's the first thing you need to do. If your son or daughter says, you know what, I don't want to go to a four-year school, or maybe their only opportunity is to go to a junior college, okay, they can do that as well. There's no clearinghouse to fill out on a junior college. Okay. You don't have to worry about that. But after two years at a junior college, they want to go to a four-year college after that, then they're going to have to go through the eligibility center. So you're not going to be able to avoid it. All right? You're going to have to hit it one way or the other. Okay, so that's your that's your first step. You can do that at any time. Uh, they're going to ask you a lot of questions. They're, they're going to want your transcripts. Uh, but uh, when I would get kids in, I would get transfer a kid to sign. If he was going to sign with us, I would say, have you filled out anything on those eligibility centers yet, and if no, then I uh, direct them to that, have them get on that as soon as possible. Okay? And it would come down to the last second on some of them. And they'd aggravate you. So that was that was even a bad sign. It's like, oh boy, put up the this for four years. So it dragged his feet. Okay, uh, the next thing is school research. Okay, you've registered, you're committed. Now decide what school do I want to go to. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, do they have the major that you're intending to be a part of, uh, what, what you want to enter into? Um, not all schools have all the majors that that you will that kids will want to get into, and so make sure that is really high on your priority list. Do they have the major I want? And then to go a, little, a step even deeper, what is their reputation in that major? Okay, some schools are known for things. Okay, if you get an education uh, degree at a certain school, you can almost guarantee you're going to get a job after you get out of school because people know that the teachers there, the university does a great job training teachers. Okay? And so, you know, if they, if they have a major you want, check on it. Okay, what's the reputation of it? Okay, is it, is it thought of highly? What kind of school do you want to go to? It's like, well, there's, how many options are there? Well, there's lots. Okay. Public versus private. Okay. And not all of these are the same, but you know, typically this is what you're coming into. Private schools are usually going to cost you a little more than a public school would. All right? But private schools can usually specialize in areas or push things that public schools can't. Okay. So you got to really fill out what are what is important to you and your family. Sometimes cost can kind of take a back seat because something else is important to you. Christian versus secular. Uh, some of your kids may say, "Man, I've been to Christian school for 
13 years. Hey, I want to get out and do something different, maybe be part of that. Hey, and that's fine. I, I went to junior college. I was at a secular school for two years, and then I finished up at a four-year that was a Christian school. Hey, and I'm going to just tell you this. All right? At a Christian school or it's a secular school, you can run with whatever crowd you want to run with. You can find them. All right? So just because you go to a Christian school doesn't mean they guarantee they're going to be able to run around with Christian kids. Hey, they can find the other side as well. Hey, trust me. Uh, so, but at a Christian school, you know, you are more apt to find somebody that's a good kid to run around with, I will say that. Okay, small versus large. Um, the school I was at was 2,000 students. That's pretty small uh, for a college, uh, but uh, you can get a much bigger school. Uh, you can watch, if you walk into a Mizzou or something like that, you go to a freshman biology class, you're going to be overwhelmed. There's going to be a whole lot of people there. And the professor's never going to know your name. Uh, they're probably not going to call you by your first name or your last name or anything. They're just going to look and see if there's a spot up there and somebody's taking a roll for them. Hey, or do you like that small school setting where the teacher knows your name? They're going to interact uh, daily uh, with, with that student. So that's another thing to consider. JUCO versus four year. Uh, on the athletic side, uh, and I, this is how I recruit kids. This is what I always tell players. Uh, a junior college is going to come in and say, hey, you can get your first two years in cheap, all that. And, uh, and if you're good enough to go to Division One after that, then you can go to Division One after that. Uh, my first thing I told parents was, if your son or daughter, I tried to be very blunt with them, was a Division One athlete, they'd already been talking to Division One coaches. That's just, that was what I, what I told them. Uh, and as a person who went to a junior college, after I got out of the junior college, yes, it was cheaper, but then I had to go a fifth year of school to recoup all those hours that didn't transfer from the junior college to the four years. So it saved me short term, but in the long run, I had to pay all that back anyway. Okay, so a junior, I'm, just, I'm just telling you that's what a junior college is going to tell you if they're recruiting your son or your daughter. So in, in the short term, it is a good deal. You go in as a freshman at junior college, good chance you might get to play. At a four year, it's a little tough. Okay, so there are some advantages of that as well. And then the last one, uh, you've got NCAA versus NAI. Uh, I'll tell you this, NAI is pretty comparable to NCAA Division II. Okay, that's, that's pretty comparable. Of course, you have Division I that's, that's uh, at the top level. Division III, um, Division III NCAA has very good athletes. They do not offer athletic scholarships, but they do offer the best academic scholarships. Okay, and uh, so Division Three is a good option as well. But if you want to know what's comparable, NCAA Division Two and NEI are pretty pretty even. Uh, the academic requirements for NAI are not as strict as NCAA. Okay, so uh, if your student athlete does have a little problem on the grade side of things. Uh, in NAI may be a better option for them, right? At any time while I'm talking, if you got questions, please raise your hand. Uh, I'm not promising you I'll have the answer, but we'll, we'll, uh, we can definitely talk and discuss. Yes, sir? Uh, you mentioned NCAA, that the website, did you, did you know by NCAA? NC, okay, you're talking about NC. NCCAA, is that National Christian College Association? Oh, NCSA, yes, I know about it. We're gonna get into that in a second, okay? All right, I know, I know all about that. Place. Okay, the next thing on school research. Cost, it's just not tuition. Some people go and they see tuition and they're like, okay, that's not so bad. Well, there's a little bit more, all right? You're gonna have Room and board, hey, and the junior college I went to, there was like five dorms and all the rest of them stayed in there. Okay, so everybody else had to stay off campus. So uh, we were kind of forced to do that. But at Evangel, where I coached at, uh, athletes could not stay off campus. They had to stay on campus until their senior year, and then they could go live with mom and dad if they wanted to. 
And so they thought that would be cheaper, except for when they told them what gas costs, what was food, what was rent, what was bills, all that type of stuff. Like, did you really save any money? Okay, and it was a lot more inconvenient if you're having to drive back and forth 30 miles all the time. Okay, so those are things to look at and to consider. Some schools allow athletes to live off campus. Okay, it's, it's not a big deal. Okay, but you have to ask yourself, we live, I live with two other guys. Okay, so there's three guys paying rent, you know, eating terrible food every night because none of us could cook. <laughs> you know, and so, it, yeah, it was a great time. But uh, so we were able to split rent and all that type of stuff. So that was good. And so uh, those online courses were very helpful, and a lot of colleges are going to these. So uh, that's that's another good question to ask. Okay, anything on school research before we go to scholarships? All right. All right, scholarships. First thing up there, academic versus athletic. This is a proven fact. There's much, much, much more academic money out there than athletic money. I laugh sometimes at some families that will have their kid traveling all over the country playing sports, uh, spending all this money, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's like, you need to spend half of that money on getting your kid a tutor. He could have made a lot more academically than he had athletically. You know, so at, that is just a fact. There's a, the better your kid can do in school, academically, some schools, they never get into the athletic scholarships. I know if I could get a kid where I needed him through academic money and could save my athletic money for another kid that maybe wasn't so smart, uh, then I would do that. And so if, if, you're, if your son or daughter can get a lot of money af academically, that's going to make them look really good to a coach because he knows he can save his athletic money. Right? The next thing you would like, probably want to look at is what is the school scholarship structure? And Scott, so many schools do it different. Okay, uh, one thing that, that we did, that we did, that a lot of schools didn't do, is we stacked scholarships. Okay, so that's a question. That means, can I stack my athletic scholarship on top of my academic scholarship, on top of my financial aid scholarship, on top of my departmental scholarship? You know, does all that stack up or does it just get to a certain level and then it stops doing that and then the athletic scholarship goes away? Okay, because some schools do that. Okay, so you have to, you have to be very uh, poignant with your questions uh, about, about how they do that. Okay, so do they stack scholarships? Can you have both academic and athletic scholarships? Not all schools do that. Okay, they either go one way or the other. Or they just go part way in one, and then then the academic money has to kick in. Right? Is there a limited amount? Okay. Is there a cap? Like the school may cost twenty five thousand dollars to go to, but they may cap their scholarships at fifteen thousand. Okay. I know there's some schools in our conference that us coaches would talk a lot. You know, we play. What's your scholarships? Structure, you know, and we talk I'm like, man, we should have that. You know, that grass is always greener on the other side. That's what we thought. Uh, but uh, you know, there was some schools that, that would only do that, but then they would they would add the financial aid or something like that to maybe help out. All schools have departmental money. All schools have university money. Okay, and uh, but they all usually have deadlines that you've got to get in those forms for. So some departmental money, like if your son is going to be a bio, or daughter's going to be a biology major, okay, there's, there's departmental money there that they can get. Uh, but it's usually a small amount, and it's usually not for everyone, okay? Uh, they have deadlines, and they interview for it, and whoever they choose out of those, those interviews, who gets that money. Uh, universities usually have things like founder scholarships, uh, freshman scholarships, transfer scholarships, legacy scholarships. If you're, if you went to a school, uh, your son or daughter, if they go to that same school, there's probably going to be some type of legacy scholarship that they will automatically get because you went there. Right? A plus money. That's not just for junior colleges. Okay, you can 
You're not going to get your first two years paid for tuition like you would in junior college. Okay? But there are more, more and more four-year schools are giving some type of A-plus money. Uh, so A-plus money is worth getting even if you're going to a four-year school. At Evangel, we had a church match scholarship. Uh, I think it was up to $500. So if the church paid $500, church would, if we would put in $250, the church would put two. No, wait, sorry. Let me say it again. If the church put in $250, then the university would match that up to $500. Okay? So there's there's a lot of little things like that. If you get in and dig into, into scholarships for each a university all have little different things that, that uh, are worth looking into. And you're like, well, $500 isn't a whole lot. Well, if you keep getting $500 here and there, and then and there, it starts adding up. And uh, so you just want to look for those opportunities. Financial aid. Financial aid. Uh, one thing I ask players as soon as I got there, have you filled out your FAFSA? Have you filled out your FAFSA? Well, I'm not going to get any. Have you filled out your FAFSA? I don't hear it. Okay. Have you filled that out? Okay, I don't care if you don't think you're going to get any money, fill it out, and let's find out first before I give you any help. Okay, because I want to know what I'm working with. Okay, so FAFSA is, uh, uh, is federal money. Okay, it's something the, the government gives you. You do not have to pay it back. And that's usually called, it's a grant, and uh, called a uh, Pell Grant. And I think uh, last time, we were giving those out. It was somewhere around between five and six thousand dollars a year uh, that, that kids would get, and they would have to pay back. So that's that's a good thing. Uh, loans. Um, that's usually a bad word to say, but um, Perkins loan is a loan. I think it's you know with every loan you got to pay it back, but. With the Perkins loan, it's, I think it's about a 5% interest rate, something like that. So it's lower than, than what you would do if you went to the bank or something like that. So um, they, they do try to make it a little easier on you. But uh, uh, if you get grants, scholarships, that's that's better than, than getting a loan. But sometimes a loan's necessary to be able to pay for, for the school. And then work study. Um, Work study, I had a couple work studies. Uh, I think they were both worked about seven or eight hours a week for me. And they all both got paid minimum wage. And like, well, that's not a whole lot of money, but a college student getting 60 or 70 bucks a week, man, that's great. You know, give me some, some meal money, some some, uh, some gas money, that type of stuff just to have. And, and you guys as parents know, hey, yeah, that's less money I've got to you know, fork over to help them with their car or whatever. So any amount of money they get, and that's that's another one that's that has to be a, the you have to. What's the word I'm looking for? You apply for it and qualify. There you go. You have to qualify for it. Okay, it's not just okay. You want to, you want to have or say okay, you get it. No, you have to qualify for it. Okay, and and you never know when that's going to be. If t my first two years in school, I didn't get I didn't get. Uh, to do work study. When I transferred, I filled out the same stuff, put in the same numbers, my parents had the same job, wasn't any different, and I got work study my last year of college. Great, all right, I got to go around and pick weeds off the baseball field and all that kind of stuff, made a few bucks, and I was happy. Now, the work study, that, is that for college or university? They make that decision, right? That's not a schedule, it's like, it's not Right, right. <laughs> At Evangel, we didn't have enough jobs to give everybody a job, all the people that qualified. So they had, as soon as they found out that they were qualified for it, they had to go and find a professor or a coach who actually could get the job and they had to get it. And so I, like I said, I would get, I got two work studies every semester. And so we would just make that decision. Actually, I just picture the first come, first come. I would, I would have guys asking two years in advance, hey, this kid's going to graduate two years. Can I get work study? Can I get your work study then? You know, it's kind of one of those deals. Uh, so, so you got you to be, you know, sometimes it's a, a seniority thing or it's just uh, eventually if you wait long enough, you'll get to do that. But, um, yeah, it's, you'll qualify. The government will tell, tell you to qualify in the school depending on how many jobs they have can put you in those positions. But you've got to be on your toes and ready to go grab one of those because they go fast. 
And I guess I fired some more studies because they weren't coming, getting their hours in. Because I wasn't going out there and picking the weeds out of the field, <laughs> so that was going to be their job. Okay, any questions on scholarships? All right. Okay, here's, here's, here's the one everybody uh, is really interested in, is the college, is the athletic recruitment. Uh, when I was in school, I made, the, I made the mistake that I really thought I was something special, okay? And I thought all these schools are gonna come to me and recruit me, and yeah, because they know I am really good, you know? So that's what I thought. Um, and so it's June, and I'm still waiting on, you know, phone calls, you know, my senior year. And uh, so I got lucky and, and I had a couple offers, but uh, um, if I would have done what some of these other kids did to me when I was a coach, uh, I maybe would have had a few more offers. But uh, here's the first thing I'll tell you. If you are interested in a specific school, contact them. Get in touch with them. Yeah, you're like, well, I don't want to. How do I get in touch with them? Go to the athletic website. Go to whatever sport that you're interested in. They'll have a coaches link that you click on. It'll drop down and show you all the coaches. You click on the coach's name and bam, his email will pop up. Okay, I promise you. I've done that a lot. All right, so uh, that's how you get the information to get in contact with them. Okay, like I did, don't expect them to know who you are. And this right here, college coaches are flooded every day with emails and phone calls from recruiting services, okay, the N NSCA. Uh, I would get, I was only signed up with two recruiting services because the other ones, they didn't keep their information updated. You know, I would call a kid, and say, hey, I uh, saw that you're, no, that was two months ago, I've already signed. So I, I got rid of the recruiting services that weren't up to date. So I've got a mixture bag on the recruiting services. They, some of them are good, some of them are not so good, so you have to be careful with them. Uh, but I, I get a couple of days still from this one recruiting service, so I'm, I haven't told them I'm still not coaching yet, so I just forward those on to some of my guys down in Evangel, try to help them out. But uh, uh, I would probably get 20 to 25 of these every day. And it's, after a point, it just gets overwhelming. And you're just like, you're going through, and you've got other things to do, and you're just like, oh, I can't read this, delete it. No, because I'll never get to it. And so they just get inundated with this stuff over and over and over and over again. And so I'm not telling you not to get involved with the recruiting service because there are some good things they do, but I'm going to show you how to do exactly the same thing they do for free. Okay? Uh, and uh, so that's where I'm hoping I can help you out a little bit. So we're going to get into that in a second. And this is honest, this is honest, or at least it was for me. Coaches pay much more attention to personal emails or phone calls than they do recruiting service. Okay, because at Evangel, I was recruiting a very specific kind of kid. I was recruiting a kid that was coming out of this school. Okay, Christian kid, made good grades. Um, I had to have that type of a kid. Okay, so I knew when I got contacted, personally by somebody that this is what they were looking for. They were looking for a place like Evangel. When I got stuff from a recruiting service, I had no clue what I was getting. Okay, no clue. Okay, out of those 20 emails, two of the kids I, that I would look at even knew what a church was. <laughs> okay, and so if you're looking for a place like a Christian school or, or a specific school, I'm telling you, if you'll, if you'll make that personal contact, that goes a long ways uh, for that coach and uh, them seeing that you really are uh, someone they're interested in or someone they need to look into. Okay, so next thing, what to do. Okay, one, one of the first things you can do is pretty easy, is you can go online and on almost every athletic uh, website, there is a questionnaire, athletic questionnaire, and you can fill all that out, and that, you know, I would get those things, they'd fill them out, and they'd come directly to my email. And it'd also go directly to admissions. 
Okay, so you'd be on the coach's radar and you'd be on the admissions radar. Okay, and they have like 20 people working in admissions, so you're going to get something like back real quick. Because okay, they, they want you at the school. They want you at the school. The coach is going to look a little closer at everything. You know, and see if the, you're, you're a person that's, that's capable of playing at that level. Okay, make a contact. Do personal email. And this is what you need to have in email. And this is what I tell kids all the time. Okay, first have some type of a bio. All right, have the athletic information, what positions they play, maybe what stats, maybe want some awards, you know, anything uh, that would just get maybe what the level the athlete used to playing at or what they're capable of, get that on the bio. It's very important to have academic info. Okay, a lot of colleges, if you're not, if you don't do well in the classroom, they're not going to bother, they're not going to bother you with you. Because if you don't do well in the classroom at the high school level, college level is not going to get any better. Okay? Most usually not. And then if you played other sports, uh, this is, it was important to me to know that a kid just didn't play baseball 12 months out of the year. I like to see guys that did multiple things. Yeah, I think the body needs a break. And it showed me they were capable of doing other things. Uh, and, and each sport demands a different type of movement. Okay? and the body needs a break. Okay, so other sports are, are a plus to most colleges, college coaches. Okay, I tell them I need that, and I tell them if you would just make me a video clip. And these are the things I would ask for in the video clip. Okay, baseball is a very measurable game. Okay, 40, 60 times I knew what I was looking for. If a guy said he played outfield and he ran a six second 40, no. Nah. Okay, we're not, we're not recruiting you, okay? The ball would need to be hit directly at him for it to be able to catch him. Okay. So, so those 60 and 40 times and, and the sports that are important too, I want to see him fielding a ground ball, uh, fielding a fly ball, whatever they did. Uh, I want to see him throw with a gun. I want to have him on the mile per hour on the gun, especially if there's a pitcher. Um, and then hitting, obviously some hitting footage. And if they could get some game footage, you know, that was even better. Because anybody, I said, anybody can sit in there and hit a BP fastball. Okay, that's, that's no big deal. But if I could see the competition he was playing, and he was able to hit, and, you know, they never sent the times Johnny struck out. You know, they always sent, he hit three bombs in this game. He's the greatest player in the world. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, those are things that you can do free of charge, okay? And you can put those on an email and send to the coach. He can, I mean, I could look at something like that, and I could give immediate feedback to the parent. And sometimes it's, some, I'll be honest with you, sometimes it wasn't what they wanted to hear, okay? But it's, it saves you the money, and at least you get an honest opinion, okay? So that's something you can do that is not going to charge you, cost you any money, and uh, would be uh, just an initial contact that would get you on the rare. And if, it, if your, your son or daughter is really somebody, they look at that and they say, okay, I like what I see. They're gonna they're gonna be do everything they can to get to the next game, okay? And that's what I do. I get these things, and if I liked what I'd see, I was going to a game, or I'd send one of my assistants to go see the game, and uh, we we would see what they look like in game competition. Okay, any questions on that? Yes. I had I had mixed. I, I, I didn't know. Uh, my first thought was like, yeah, I wanted to know I was there because I wanted to see. Because if you showed showed up, it was just, if you get to go to a small town, people would freak out when you showed up. Mm -hmm. you know, so you'd kind of like hide your, yeah. your gear that you had on because you didn't want to know who you were. Uh, but uh, so half of me was like, okay, I don't I want to hide because I want to see what they can do. And I want to see how they react if they know I'm not, if they don't know I'm watching. Because some kids would just act like idiots, <laughs> you know? And you're like, okay, I know I don't want that kid. But if they knew you was coming, then they'd be on best behavior. Okay, but also, if they knew you were coming, then you could see how they really played with maybe some pressure they were feeling. Okay, so some coaches, I would, I would do it both ways, to be honest with you. Uh, but, uh, Usually if he was a kid I was really serious about recruiting, I was going to more than one game. And there might be the initial game I might show up and not unannounced and then tell him I was going to come back. 
the next week at St. Paul. Okay. okay, what to do continued. Most schools have a camp or a showcase that you can attend. Uh, I'll be honest with you, some of these are money grabs, okay? I know this is the way I got some of my coaches money before Christmas, okay? We always had a couple, we got a showcase the two Saturdays before Christmas break, and uh, we'd have 25, 20, 25 kids in at each showcase. We had a nice indoor facility, and uh, we do some things, but we always came out of those things with about four or five kids that were like, okay, these guys have a chance. Uh, we also had a junior varsity team, so uh, you know, we had a, a lot of options for kids maybe coming in. Uh, but, uh, you know, if they are having this, you know, this is a great chance to get in front of them. Uh, usually those one-day showcases don't cost a whole lot of money, especially if the university's running. If you go to the big showcases where there's 100 kids at, the, those are great and all that, but you better be pretty good if you want to get noticed. Uh, I would go to those things every weekend, and uh, it seemed like I saw the same kids all the time. And uh, so it, uh, you got to be pretty good to get noticed because there's so many kids, and uh, you got so many coaches there, and so many I'm watching, and, you know, all the coaches become best friends because we see each other every weekend, same guys. And uh, it was good to see they showed up a different shirt the, the next week, so they weren't wearing the same clothes all the time. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is, this, is, this is a good opportunity if the school is putting on their own showcase. And that's what we did. We, guys that we were really interested in, we would give a personal invite to. You now, we all had it open to everybody, but if there's somebody, a guy that we knew was really interested in, and hadn't been able to see yet, we were making sure to try to get him in, if at all possible. And then, after you've done all that, you've made those contacts, ask your, uh, ask your high school coach uh, if they'll make that contact for you. Uh, I would hope all of our coaches would um, do that for you to help you out, because uh, I, I always like talking to the high school coach uh, or the club coach or whoever that was, because they would usually, uh, well, some of them would be honest with you, uh, but some would, yeah, he still was 95 miles an hour. You show up, it's like 78. What in the world happened? Uh, so, so yes, yeah, so you get to know who those guys are real quick as well. But, uh, you know, the high school coach can kind of vouch for the character of the kid and that type of stuff, because they see him in all types of different situations. So those are the questions I like to ask the high school coach. Okay, something that is very important for your son or daughter in choosing the college, and this is one thing that I tried to do as a coach, is I, I didn't want a kid showing up on our campus and go, man, I didn't know it was going to be like this. And I wanted to know exactly what they were getting themselves into. Okay, from the class standpoint to, to what they're going to expect in our program, what they could expect from the the cafeteria, you know, I want them to experience everything. And you can do all that by going on a campus visit. And usually on a cap campus visit, you can set that up, and that's usually through admissions. Okay, you go to admissions, you sign up for that, that campus tour, and uh, they, can, uh, they can let you know everything's gonna, what's gonna happen. So they can take you to all the, the places on the school, show you all, show you all the stuff, uh, meeting with admissions, that's always an important one. Meet with financial aid. The point right there is something I told players all the time when I was recruiting and they'd be in the office, parents, we'd be talking. I said, man, we don't know if we can pay all this or anything like that. I said, I said here's, here's, here's the advice I'll give you. Do not go in to admissions and talk financial aid and just say, I just need as much money as you can give me. Okay, because that really doesn't give them a target to shoot for. If you can go in there and say, we can afford this. We can afford this payment a month. Okay, whatever that is. Okay, if you'll go in there and give them a number to shoot for, and they like you, and once you hunt their school, 
a grant, they will do everything they can to get to that number. That's much easier for them than just coming and say, give me all the money you can. Because then that they just really have no, they're just, they don't know what they're shooting for, they don't know what they uh, are trying to get to. So that is a key point. And uh, admissions, and I, we, I talked with admissions about this at our school, and they said that it helped them a lot get uh, kids to uh, get the parents to understand where they get to and help them understand where they need to get the family to make it happen. Okay, so that, that's a key question to, to ask. Meet with the department head of the major. Uh, if you're a biology major, meet with the biology head. You know, talk to him about the program. Uh, get a good feel about what all needs to be done from your freshman year to your senior year so you can graduate in four years and not in six or seven, whatever the case might be. And then if you're going to a Christian school uh, or, or whatever school, sit down in a class. Just go to a class and sit down and just, just you like the environment or not. Okay? And at our school, we were a Christian school, so we had chapel two days a week. Okay, so our recruits all set in on a chapel and just were part of that and got to experience that. And so, like I said, I didn't want them to come to school and say, man, I didn't know I didn't know we were going to go to chapel. I just got an SCA. I didn't I thought I was done with chapels. Okay. <laughs> no, you just started. Okay. And we my assistant coach at Evangel, he went, he also he also played at Evangel. And when he was going to Evangel, they had chapel five days a week. Yeah. And so when our kids would come in and complain that they had to go two days a week, he's like, I don't want to hear none of that. Okay? I don't want to hear none of that. But, uh, you know, we would, have, uh, we would have to play chapel videos on our, on our bus rides to games because our kids were missing chapels. And so they would have to, like, write little summaries of what the chapel was. Yeah, that was not, that was not fun times. Do, do away with those memories. All right, so those are some things you're going to see on a campus visit, on a normal campus visit for academics or anything. But if you want to go and do a campus visit and include the athletic side of things, meet with a coach, but make sure and ask admissions if they're going to be there that day. That is my pet peeve. Yeah, I would be getting ready to leave, been practice, all that type of stuff. It's like six o'clock. Get a call from mission. Uh, we got a family here that want to meet with you. Really? Of course, I would say okay. I'd stay and do it. But or sometimes they'd show up and they want to meet with me, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't be there that day, or I'd be gone in the game, or something like that, because they didn't ask ahead. They never got to talk with me. So if you're going and you specifically want to talk to the coach or one of the assistant coaches or somebody like that or just see the program, make sure when you're setting up that visit that you ask to meet with the coach, ask if he's going to be there at that. And admissions will say, I don't know, we'll contact him. They contacted me, asked me if I was going to be there that day, I'd tell them yes or no, and they'd base their visit on that. Okay, so make sure and ask that question. If the coach is going to be there, there that day, maybe the team is in, involved in practice, watch a practice. Okay, find out when the practice schedule is and, and just go see what the coach is like in a, in a practice session. Okay, now I know me, when I knew recruits were watching, I was a lot nicer. <laughs> you know, it's like, pat guys in the back, good job, man. You are the greatest player here. Right? This is something I like to do in the fall. We had fall practices, and so any of our recruits that were, that were coming in, I'd have them hop in and practice. They hop in, and you know, I wanted them to meet our shortstop, who was a great player and a great guy. Man, he was my, he was my best recruiter. You know? And so I'd have him hang out with him during practice. I'd say, you know, Jake, you got this guy in practice? Whatever he does, or whatever you're doing, he's doing with you. All right, so they take off and warm up together and all that type of stuff. And there are a lot of questions and interaction. Is the coach crazy? You know, <laughs> you know what time do you got to get up in the morning? You know, and, and tarp duty. What's tarp duty like? You know, so so they'd have all these questions. And they could interact. And so if if your son or daughter can go during an off season time when the team is practicing and can be involved in that, that's that's a great experience, a great 
the opportunity to see what the program is like. Okay? And uh, just so you know, if the coach tries to do that during the season, no, you cannot do that. All right? That will mess up your son or daughter's eligibility. Okay? So uh, most college coaches know that. They know that. Uh, but there are a few that maybe haven't been around uh, a long time. They, really, they don't know that, that, uh, that rule. So make sure that uh, you are not practicing at a college or a showcase or anything like that during the season uh, that uh, you're going to the college to do the showcase. In. And then lastly, follow up. Okay, after you do all those things, uh, man, you get back, you, you love the school, the campus visit was great, you love the coach, man, send an email to him, call him, whatever, a text. It got toward the end and I left Evangel, it was just, kids didn't, they never answered the phone when I called them, but when I text them, it was like, they would answer me in like 0.2 seconds, it's like, yeah. So they, they were all, they were more into that than the phone calls, nobody answers phone calls anymore. But uh, man, Coached out, I had a great time. I loved the program, I loved the school. You know, that, that gives the coach a really good idea whether they're gonna be able to, to give you an offer or not, and if you're really interested. Uh, you know, if I didn't hear anything back from the kid, uh, I would wonder, I right, must not like it, okay? And so this, the coach is probably gonna contact you, but it'd be better if you get cut in contact with him uh, or her and uh, let them know that you had a good, good time your time here. And I know that sometimes you're playing the game, you like this school, but you got another school that's also you're interested in, so you kind of, yeah, it's a fun game. All right, so it gets down to the end. It's time to make a decision. All right, so getting an offer. How do colleges decide who they offer to who they don't offer to, what do they offer, how much do they offer, how much they don't offer, how do they make all those decisions? Well, for me, it always depended on what were my needs in my program. Okay, if your son's a second baseman, and I've got an all-conference senior coming back, and I've got a sophomore who has been, I've been grooming for two years to be his replacement, and I've got scholarship money out to two second basemen, I'm really not looking to put another second baseman under scholarship. Okay, and so it has to be a need for the school, for the program. Yeah. So do you ask that when you're visiting the school? Is that something, did you ask, hey, my daughter's a first baseman, where, is you, where are you at in your first baseman? Right, okay. and, and you do, and, that, and I, I, was, I was pretty upfront with people. I tell them what I had coming back because I didn't want anybody to be surprised, but you'd be surprised a lot of them didn't care. Okay. They thought, you know, they just thought Sam was the greatest player ever. And, yeah. He was going to start over the two-time All-American that you had and all that. So, uh, yeah. But so, so need uh, is is a big one, and then also the scholarship money they have available. Like I said, they may have put two kids at the same position already on scholarship, and they, you know, putting more money to that same position doesn't make sense for them. Even though your son or daughter may be a really good player and somebody they want. Uh, there was a lot of times where I would give kids an offer and their parents were just really offended that, that I told them. I was like, hey, this is what I have. You know, it's not, this is not an indication of how good your son is. It's just what I have left. I'm giving him every penny I can. Uh, and, 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 you know, that's the case a lot of times if, if kids don't get the offer that they, that they think they should have gotten. Okay. A good question to ask coaches, and as a freshman, they get a $5,000 athletic scholarship offer. You're saying, all right, that's great. Okay, we, we can make that work. Okay. One question you want to ask them, that's great, but can this go up? Can it go down? Okay, is this $5,000 every year, or can I get more the next year? Okay. And uh, I, can't, I can't speak for every college. I know for us, uh, it was performance-based, which is, I thought was what everything should be. Okay, if your son plays well, his scholarship offer is probably going to go up next year. If he doesn't play well, it's probably going to Very rarely did we go down in scholarship. It either stayed the same or it went up. Now, if a kid is just not what we thought he was going to be and just couldn't handle it, then, you know, we would drop the offer or just do away with it. They'd have to stay on as a walk-on if they wanted to be. Uh, and so... 
So that's a, that's a good that's a good question, and, and find out what that's based on if they if they raise it or lower it. When you're weighing offers with other schools, make sure that you're comparing apples with apples, and not apples and or with oranges. Um, <laughs> This, this, is, this is something that happened on a regular basis. I, I might offer a kid, just say a $10,000 baseball scholarship, and he would get a $20,000 baseball scholarship from out of school. And, and so he would, based on that, he would take the $20,000. Well, it cost like $40,000 to go to the school. He took the $20,000 offer from and twenty five dollars to go from ours. Okay? It would have cost less to come to our school, okay? But he just saw the baseball offer and thought that was a better, better offer. Okay, so make sure if 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 it's all based just on cost for your family, make sure that you're really finding out what the total cost is once the scholarships have been have been plugged in, okay? Because some people don't see don't see all that. And the last thing. Red shirts and walk-ons. Uh, red shirt, you can still skip, get scholarship money for if you're a red shirt. Okay, you can still get scholarship money. Walk-ons, students don't get scholarship. Okay, but on both cases, and red shirt, that means that usually means you're not going to play the first year. Okay, you're not going to play the first year. There. A lot of times we would red shirt kids because maybe he wasn't really strong ac academically coming out of high school, and we just want him to focus on his classwork the first year, and then we'll, if you do well in your classes, then we'll bring you on that next year. Or maybe a kid is coming off of an injury in high school, and uh, so they would redshirt that first year. Redshirting is not a bad thing. It's, I, I, any freshman I could redshirt that was gonna stick around, I would do it. Uh, I, I loved it because I loved the maturity level they were at during that fifth year. And I just told him it's probably going to take you five years anyway to get through school. Why not play baseball all five years? Okay. So they could still practice, they just couldn't play yep. the game. Red shirts. Uh, now, there, there are some non qualifiers for red shirts that cannot practice, uh, but uh, that's something through NCAA and on, on an NAI, they don't have that. Okay, but either way, it gets you in the program, it gives you a chance. You know, these walk-on kids, like, man, I'm not getting money, it bums me out. But you get in the program. The coach is willing to take you, get you in the program, it gives you a chance to show them what you can do. And then you just start working, and you find a way to get on the field. And then the last thing, most important thing, is pray about it. Hey, whatever offer that is, uh, if money's the most important thing to you, the amount of money you're going to get, great, but I don't I don't think that should be the deciding factor all the time. We had a thing at Evangel, uh, we talked about cost versus cost. Okay, what's the cost financially compared to the cost spiritually of sending your kid maybe not to a Christian school or sending them to Evangel specifically? <laughs> okay, uh, because the eternal cost. I've said this speech a lot. You know, the eternal cost compared to the financial cost, they don't compare. They don't compare. And so we were confident that we were going to be able to pour into these kids spiritually uh, in college, that this is going to be some place they could grow uh, in their spiritual walk. Uh, and, and you guys know, all of you guys have been to college, sometimes college is not a place to grow spiritually. And so, uh, uh, so yeah. Uh, if you can grow in, in your spiritual walk in college, that's that's always a good thing. So you always want to weigh that that cost versus cost. What is what's important to my family? Um, and I'm not I'm not plugging Christian schools, in college, anything like that. But I know that's something that's important to people here at this school. And so I know that's something you guys will definitely weigh before you make decisions. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Question was: A lot of schools have college days that you can go down and use on college days. There's a whole lot of students that come in at one time. 
I usually the college will have up a pretty organized schedule that all those things will get answered, but they'll always ask if there are questions and you can ask those. College days were great days for coaches because they knew they were going to get a lot of people coming in at once, especially kids they had recruited that were all going to be coming once and they, get, they could knock all that out in one day. Uh, and so usually coaches are prepared to be on campus on those days, or at least we were told we were going to be on campus on those days and uh, you know, be ready to meet with some kids. So yeah, those, those are really good days, but usually most of your questions will be answered without even asking because they, they're organized and set up and ready to answer those questions with pamphlets or brochures or anything like that. But those are great days to ask questions. Anyone else? All right, well, uh, my email address is on there. If there's anything that comes up that you want to ask, uh, please ask it. I didn't know how this night would go. Uh, I didn't know how many people would show up here. We, we had a lot of people call and ask about it, and they wanted the notes from it, but they couldn't, they couldn't be here tonight. So, uh, so uh, hopefully this was something that you got one or two things from that helped you out. Uh, I'm not some genius or anything, so, but God has given me some, some experiences that I think uh, uh, might be helpful to, to athletes and some parents and that when they're considering where they want to send their kid uh, and some questions to ask. And these are, I've, I, was, I was thinking of stuff today that I was like, oh man, I should put that on there. And, and so I know there's some things I'm probably forgetting that, that I would, that maybe next year I'll have on there. But uh, if you have any questions, Send me an email. I'm usually pretty good about answering emails and, and get back with you and uh, try to answer any questions that you have. All right. One hour. It's about 15 minutes longer than I thought it was.